Hello and welcome to another episode of me drawing this time. Well, kind of drawing, kind of painting. I'm using oil pastels. Here's the set that I've got. Um, these are Sennelia oil pastels. I really like them. And uh, let's see what I do. So there's quite a lot of colours and what I tend to do now is I squint my eyes down as I look at them and then I can choose which one I prefer. And the reason you're squinting is when you have a picture like that. <laughs> That's the painting that I did, um, a watercolour painting. And uh, I thought oh, it would be quite good to have a go at painting that one. So I'm using some grey card, it's a scrapbooking card. And I've just grabbed some of the blue. Stop putting in the sky. Just scrubbing it and uh, leaving an area free to where I want the uh, clouds to go, because there's a few clouds in the sky. Using another blue, <laughs> just to change the tone a little bit, because you can uh, smudge these together. Or you can just pile it on on top. <laughs> they are quite easy to use oil pastels in comparison to uh, regular pastels, the more chalkier type pastels. I find them easier anyway. Just using my finger, just scrubbing away. just wanted to uh, soften it a little bit. Just scrubbing. And always <coughs> sitting back having a look, remember? Always sit back, have a look. <laughs> I've got this sort of light grey, I'm just putting in where the clouds are. Like I said, you can go right over the top of the, the previous colour with the oil pastels. I'm just softening it with my finger. And then looking at my box of uh, colours, I think to myself, hmm, which one shall I use? <laughs> I tend to, sometimes I go for the darks first, like in this occasion, and sometimes the lights. So this, I'm going for the sort of undertone of the colours. Sort of, the, it looks like a a raw sienna, probably that one. Just kind of tap in and scribble in. <laughs> just getting the feel of the picture. So this is where a lot of the uh, lights hit in, so I didn't want it to be too dark underneath. Because as much as you can pile the colour on, it does tend to mix. <laughs> A little bit of the green. Trying to uh, create a bit of depth in that tree using some of the darker, darker green. I'm just tapping. Looking at the background and Putting a bit of colour down. I'm 
mixing it a little bit with the sky colour. Just <laughs> blending. I found when you blend it, if you blend it quite thin, you can uh, go over the top of that quite easily. I'm just very lightly blending that, I'm not going to push it too hard. Putting a bit of the sky behind that tree, make that tree look airy, because uh, it was in real life. <laughs> you could see through it. I grabbed some of this light colour. This is where the my sunlight's hitting. So I thought, well, this will be my sunlight colour now. It's quite a nice warm orange. Now I'm looking at the uh, angle of the land and how dark it is at the base. Really dark. All right, we'll get some of this brown, and then some of this needed darkening a little bit. Let's fill this in. Look at the uh, the shape of the land. I said, <laughs> if you smudge it quite thin, which I do with this, you can pile colour on top. This needed blocking in this area. So I'm aiming for my darks. And I'm looking at the uh, painting that I did, I'm looking at where all the darks went. It's actually quite satisfying smudging this. <laughs> it's quite good fun. And then if you have some wet wipes next to you, you can wipe your finger and then you can smudge lighter colours. Otherwise, <laughs> you could have a finger full of uh, burnt umber and then you'll go and smudge your light colour and it'll be burnt umber. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. Now I find these pastels quite soft, so blending I don't have any problems with. Some people use minerals and spirits to get the to to create effects and stuff, but I don't feel the need for anything. If he was doing this on a canvas, a smooth canvas, maybe he would. I'm not sure. I quite like using card. Good to experiment though, isn't it, with different mediums. So just putting greens, Let's put this green in there. Gave that brown a green tone. Now I'm putting some light in this tree. So there's quite a lot of light hitting this tree. Works quite well this colour. I think it it's a cadmium yellow deep. Well, it looks like one anyway. <laughs> Who knows what colours they are? I just have a look at them and go with whatever I like. It's a good idea to have a piece of card next to your picture so you can test the colours and see if you like that one.
bit of light there in the background. Get this green one. I think it's just that green one. Start building up the colour a little bit. Looking at areas that some areas that the uh, you can see a few of the leaves in the darkness. So I thought I'd use this. It's actually broken this one. <laughs> but you can still use them. It's hanging off. <laughs> Just tapping in a few areas of green. When you're doing your picture, just sit back and have a look at it and Think about what areas you want to have a bit more colours, greens, bl blues, reds. What I uh, try and think about is warm and cold, or is thinking warm and cold. So this area wants to be fairly cold. So what's cold? Blue's cold. got a bit of the hiccups. <laughs> yes, I'm just smudging that blue into it. A bit of the sky colour into the, uh, the land in the shadows. To cool things down. And I just marked out where the bridge is. Get some of that dark. on doing the bridge. Me and uh, me and Toby, the, my dog, we walked across that bridge loads of times. It's one of his favourite walks down here. <laughs> so I'm just drawing in the bridge. dark area underneath. The water was quite low when I was uh, out doing this one. A bit more darkness in there. So if you're quite light when you're uh, putting your dark in you can uh, get sort of a, t a tone of it in. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. You don't have to uh, push down really hard, and because then you would get like a dark area. That's, <laughs> that's not making any sense. Well, if you if you're light, you can. It sort of breaks. That's what I was trying to say. The color breaks when you're light on the card, and it works really well. You get a nice texture and the colours all kind of mix nicely. <laughs> Not sure if that makes sense actually. I think if you try it, you know what I mean. It's one of those things, isn't it? When, you, when you're actually doing it. So I'm getting a bit of this warm, sort of like yellow ochre colour. Probably a raw sienna, not 100%. <laughs> Just lightly smudge that into the grass. It's a bit of a bank there. Get my sunlight in again. Think about the light going shoot. <laughs> Be brave. <laughs> the light just pokes through them trees and hits these posts. So not old, old bridge that is, half broken actually. And the lights hits there and then hits there. And it stands out, stands out nicely. Working a bit more on the bridge. Giving that contrast of dark and light.
throw in a bit more yellow in. Cause this this side is getting quite a lot of light. So I threw some yellow in there. Cad yellow, I think. And some of the grass. <laughs> And in behind there, need some more of the blue, the cool shadow. So where the light's not reaching. So sometimes you can smudge it, and sometimes it's best not to. <laughs> but you choose when you feel like you should smudge it and when you shouldn't. It's very experimental. Just putting a bit of light there. I've got a path coming round. I'm gonna lead the eye into that onto that bridge. So we'll have this path going to it. And there is a path there. <laughs> so we've got some realism anyway. Because the path is there. I actually, uh, in my watercolour painting, I didn't paint the path in. <laughs> I left it out. I kind of, I cropped it a bit more though, so you couldn't see it. And this one I've done a bit more. So there's loads of uh, grassy bits in the water. So I'm just wiggling my, I wanted to say brush then. Just wiggling the pastel a little bit, just create different shapes. Getting a black, I've got a pure black one there <laughs> to darken that hole that goes under. And then put a bit of uh, the green in front of it. And then the bricks. Just an indication that was. <laughs> so I'm moving my legs because uh, I'm actually doing this on the floor and uh, after a while your legs go numb. <laughs> so you have to change your seating position. So I'm just putting in some grassy bits, a bit of texture, some light. Some of that sunlight colour. But oil pastels, you could do these on location. You could go out with your uh, with a sketchbook and you can use these. You get a uh, fixative that you can use with them. So I'm just putting some air in here. But I have to admit, when I go out painting, I prefer either using my oils or gouache and watercolour. The gouache and watercolour setup is easily the easiest. <laughs> easiest to carry and everything. I'm just dotting in a bit more of the warm light, hitting some of these leaves. Only a few though, Not, there isn't loads of light getting through here, it's quite dark. I need to get that sign in as well. Just, just knock them down a little bit. That wanted to uh, come out and play, didn't it? <laughs> it's a, uh, I think it's a burnt sienna. I just wanted to warm up some of my lights with a bit of uh, the sienna. Burnt sienna is really an orange. So I'm just looking and getting the feel of it and putting it in where I want. 
it's one of these instinct type things just go with the feel of it see I started to do that path with straight strokes but I changed my mind later on I want to lead myself in so I change that to uh, almost like arrows so some of the leaves are catching a bit of the sunlight so I'll put a bit of the not sunlight the bounce light from the sky so put him in a bit of the blue keeps things cool and if you have a look you really look <laughs> you do get things like that it's really interesting when you go out painting with your sketchbook you f you see so much more than you'd normally do <laughs> you start observing so much so I used a bit of the yellow just to warm up that light that's hitting there I'm using a little, there's only a little piece that broke off. <laughs> but it works. But things really come together quite quickly with these, which I like. I thought I would uh, put in the, a bit more of the light of the clouds. Now you, you make your clouds as soft as you wish. You could smudge those as a sign. <laughs> There's a little signpost there. Stands out on, in front of that dark. It does catch the light there. <laughs> so I've got some of the red. The way of leading the eye in is to have a bit of red somewhere. Try and save it for the centre of the picture where you want the eye to go some more dark just wanted that to be a bit darker there really show that it's sunny, warm in areas, cool and dark in other areas. I put a bit of white in there but the problem is with white, <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> so I changed to this bright yellow and that I liked because it's not white, the white is cold and I don't want cold, I want a nice warm a warmth, that lemon, lemony light yellow works quite nice I can get rid of that white <laughs> then I change the path you see I try and take you in, lots of arrows that go in towards the bridge. That's what I was thinking as I was drawing those. So I've noticed uh, one of my favourite artists uses that quite a lot. Mr. Vincent. Okay, I'm just putting a little grass marks in and then I thought hmm be nice to have a, uh, a bird in adding a bit more of that light that light yellow it's 
software in that bit. And a bit more, a bit more of that yellow there, hitting the, uh, hitting that tree. And then <laughs> a cormorant. <laughs> it's a big bird, that one. <laughs> That's when you use the uh, pastels when they're a bit blunt. They tend to be like that. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you at another one. Cheers. Bye.